this time I didn't get caught. I'm done drinking. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Garrick. This is Labor Economics Chapter 3. We are studying labor demand. This is part 6. If you haven't seen the previous parts, go ahead and watch those parts. Today we'll talk about long run demand. Let's get started. So long run demand is all about, uh, this is long run labor demand. This is all about determining how many workers to hire at the same time, how many units of capital to purchase, right? So in the long run, when the wage rate drops, two effects arise, okay? These are very similar to income and substitution effects. But the question is what's going to happen to the employment or level of labor or the optimal level of labor these uh, companies should hire? Okay, so wage rate is dropping, right? It's cheaper to hire workers now. Let's see what's going to happen. The first effect is scale effect. Scale effect says that the, this firm now will take advantage of the lower price of labor by expanding production. Okay, so Q star will be higher. This is a scale effect. Increase in the scale of production, in other words, quantity produced, uh, will yield. I need to hire more workers and more capital. Two things are going to happen. Okay, so wages go down. Scale effect says hire more of everything. Substitution effect says that labor is now cheaper. <clears throat> Therefore, I must hire more labor, hire less capital. Just like the substitution effect in consumption of uh, goods and leisure, remember? So it was income effect, substitution effect. Very similar. So substitution effect, the firm takes advantage of the weight change by rearranging its mix of inputs by employing more labor, less of other inputs, which is capital. So increase labor. Decrease capital. So if you look at the overall effect, wage rate goes down, increase labor, both scale and substitution effects says, both of them say increase labor, uh, scale effect says higher more capital, substitution effect says higher less capital. So again, remember, um, similar thing is happening. Wage rate goes down, employment will go up for sure. There you go. Your long run labor demand curve, it's very easy. Wage rate goes down, employment goes up, negative relationship, boom. Long run labor demand curve is also downward sloping. So, having said this, I'm going to teach you the, I'll give you the backstage VIP access on what, why is this happening and how is this happening. Okay. So, let's talk about impact of wage reduction holding costs constant okay so your total cost didn't change somehow so assume that initially initially we are at point a we are trying to produce 100 units and this is indeed the profit maximizing level of output great so we are producing at point a right uh, we chose capital labor combination right here these are the best level of capital k star and best level of employment labor cool the wage reduction, what happens is that wage reduction, right? Negative W over R is the slope. But the absolute value, <clears throat> so forget about that negative side. That's going to be the level of flatness and steepness of our budget uh, cost, ISO cost curve. So wages go down. The numerator top part will go down. So this will become flatter according to that, right? So W1, the new wage rate, is less than the initial wage rate. Slope will actually become uh, flatter. Slope will become flatter. It's going to look like this. So now I am. So this won't change because R didn't change. Total cost didn't change. Pay attention here. Wage went down, so you are dividing the same number with a much smaller number. The total number will go up. So wage rate goes down. Denominator bottom goes down. The whole thing will go up. So imagine dividing <clears throat> this one, this cup to 10 pieces versus dividing this cup to two pieces which is going to make the number total number go up, right? I divided this cup to 10 pieces. Imagine the weight of each piece versus wages went down from 10 to 2. I divide this cup to two pieces. Each uh, piece will be heavier. I hope I'm not insulting your intelligence, but 
honestly, I like concrete examples. So again, this this intercept x intercept will move out. Why? Because wages bottom line bottom part denominator went down. So the whole thing as a whole will go up. So it's to the right. Anyways, if the worm if the firm worm if the firm were to hold the initial cost constant C0 dollars, the ISO cost would rotate around C0 and the firm would move from A to B. Okay, cool. So where is B? B is somewhere here because now I'm on a different ISO cost, right? Yes. So profit maximizing firm, however, this is a wrong move, by the way. I showed you the wrong move. This is completely wrong, okay? So this move is wrong, okay? A profit maximizing firm will not do this because you will not hold the cost constant when the weight changes. You don't need to stick to C0. So remember holding cost constant. This doesn't really happen. If the wages are cheaper, you want to be able to adjust your total cost of production. This shift is wrong. I'm sorry for... <laughs> but I wanted to show you a point. So C0 total cost is changing at the same time as well. All right, let's go to the next part. Impact of wage reduction on, on output and employment of profit maximizing firm. You need to go back to remember marginal revenue, marginal cost condition. Marginal revenue equals marginal cost condition. Price equals marginal revenue equals marginal co mar average cost. We're not there. We're not at equals marginal cost yet. Price equals your little demand curve. So marginal revenue price for a perfectly competitive company equals marginal cost. We determined Q0. Okay, so this was the best level, profit maximizing level of output. What if wage rate goes down? Okay, a wage cut reduces the marginal cost of production. Reduction means shifting down. Okay, so marginal cost curve will shift down. With the, It's going to have the new wage rate shift down or to the right. Okay, and the new intersection point is right here. Interesting, my scale effect is happening. Okay, so new optimal level of output is not Q0 100 but Q1 150. How did we find this? We did price equals marginal revenue, right? Average revenue demand equals marginal cost, marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Now I have to produce more, so you need to draw this one too when you are deciding these kind of things. <clears throat> and this encourages firm to expand. Expansion means produce more, 150. So from producing 100 to 150 units, now you are actually going to see maybe an increase in cost, okay? So total cost of producing 100 units is not equal to the total cost of producing 150 units more than likely. The total cost can exceed C1, the new uh, the new C1, sorry, total cost, can exceed the original C0, okay? Or it could be less than that, okay? A firm may produce at a higher cost or lower cost. Let's see. So we have two cases, impact of a wage decline. We're studying wages going down. Total cost went up. If total cost goes up, Let's see what happens. So the shift is going to be out here. Total cost went up. Okay. How did we do this shift? R didn't change. R is constant. C1 is greater than C0. So this intercept will be above the original intercept. Number one. Number two. Yes, this intercept moving to the right. But two forces are happening. The numerator is growing at the same time. Denominator is declining. So this growth total shift my dog is barking i apologize picky stop the total shift will be even greater okay so let's find it you know we're trying to produce this q1 star 150 right so let's say we are now at point b the movement here is showing you the final change before after wage decline okay so it says hire more workers and hire more capital at the same time great so let's say our capital went up from 75 to 80 and our labor went up from 25 to 40. 
Okay. So if we want to see the substitution and scale effects, what you need to do, it's very similar to our previous case. Okay. So look at this. You draw an isocost, ghost isocost, like this, the green one, that is parallel to the initial isocost, but touching to the new isoquant, this guy. So A to X is going to be scale effect. Scale effect is all about marginal cost of production going down. Previous slide, that's here. That's the scale effect. Marginal cost of production going down. Increase in quantity to expand your business. Here, from 100 to 150. You're employing more A to X. Look, you're employing more labor, much more capital. Substitution effect at the same time, that's going to be moved from X to B, is going to tell you, hey, labor is relatively cheaper, employ more labor, and employ less capital. So X to B, if you can tell, capital is declining, but labor is increasing. Do you see? That's the substitution effect. This is becoming more labor intensive, which means I am using more labor, okay? In this example, scale effect dominated substitution uh, effect, okay? So, scale effect dominates. So, again, scale says wages went down. I'm going to do... I love to just talk about this. Wages went down. Now, I can produce more at a cheaper price. Increase your scale. To increase my scale, I need to hire more of everybody. Increase both capital and labor. Substitution says, ah, oh, labor is cheaper because wages are lower. So I'm going to hire the factor of production that's cheaper. I'm going to hire less of the input that's more expensive. Cool. So which one dominated? I see an increase in employment. So there's no domination. They both move the same direction. But because capital at the end of the day from A to B, focus on A to B, I'm going to highlight. If you focus at A to B movement, you see both capital increasing and labor increasing. So your scale effect dominated substitution effect. In this example, scale effect dominates substitution effects. Uh, when wage declines, you can draw a case where substitution effect dominates. Let's see what happens. This is again wages declining. Second thing that can happen, right? Wage decline, total cost went down, which is not very usual. What could happen? Impact of a wage decline, total cost went down. Interesting. So initially we are at point A. This is my optimal level of capital. This is my optimal level of labor. So now we are looking at the cost going down, right? So it's going to shift in here, right? Because C went down, which is unusual. So C is going down, but wages are going down too. So two forces, one force is pushing it down. The denominator going down is actually increasing the whole thing. So one shift is looking like this. So definitely y-axis is shifting down because cost, total cost went down. And at the same time, you are seeing uh, this whole thing increasing actually. All right, so this is an interesting shift. <laughs> So we were at point A, maybe we can end up at point B like this. A to B, I'm going to show you something really interesting. A to B, you're actually hiring, you're dropping capital. Capital uh, went down, employment went up. So which effect dominated here? Substitution effect dominated, right? So again, to find the decompose the substitution and scale effects, A to B is the impact of before after the wage decline so what you saw 75 this k went down b is right here boom and then labor definitely went up from 25 to this level okay so what's the scale effect scale effect just find a we're going to find an iso cost that is parallel to this blue iso cost i'm marking so Find it parallel, but make it touch to the new isoquant, okay? So A to X shows you scale effect. My scale of production went up, right? So I'm hiring more capital. Check this out. 
at the same time, I'm hiring more labor for some of you. Okay. However, substitution effect says that, oh, decrease your capital way down. So A to X is scale effect, marginal cost of production decline. Correct. We increased quantity, expanded business, employ more capital and labor. Substitution of X is the X to B movement, which says like, oh, labor is much cheaper. You need to hire more, fire your capital. Okay, so A to B, overall capital went down. Therefore, which effect has been dominant? Your substitution effect dominated in this case. Why? Because labor is relatively cheaper. Employ more workers, less capital. All right. So in this case, substitution effect dominates, capital went down. Both effects imply labor going up when wage rate declines. Okay. So here's the conclusion long run labor demand curve. What did we see? Wage went down. We saw employment go up. Okay. That's it. That was the first thing I said at the beginning of the slide. Wage rate went down. So you will see a downward sloping demand curve, labor demand curve. So conclusions, regardless of the total cost, regardless of whether total cost, that's C, zero, right, has gone down or up. And let me write down total cost. It's the wage rate time employment times employment plus rental rate times capital. In the long run, both scale and substitution effects says that when the wage rate decrease, an optimal level of employment will increase and vice versa, folks. In the long run, we put the demand curve like this. Demand long run E. Long run demand curve for labor is downward sloping. Okay, so I'll see you in part 7.